This week we're putting two of the biggest AI cooling tools side by side. Aftershoot and Narrative Select. They both promise to save you hours of staring at thousands of photos and they both claim to be smarter than the old fashioned click and delete approach we used to have. Let's start with Narrative Select. The way this software works is a little different. It doesn't just go ahead and make final decisions for you. Instead, it acts more like an assistant that helps you highlight potential problems so you can make better calls. One of the biggest features it has is the face and eye detection system. Narrative will actually analyze the faces in your frame and tell you if the eyes are open, half open, blinking, or if someone looks like they just lost a staring contest. It also gives you a focus score so you can instantly see if that guest in the back row of your wedding is sharp or just a blurry mess. What I like about this is that it saves you from the nightmare of zooming into every single image. Instead of just clicking through hundreds of photos one by one, you get a close-ups panel that shows all the faces at once. You can glance at expressions, check sharpness, and just move on. It feels like a time saver, especially if you shoot events, portraits, or anything people heavy. Another thing it does very well is grouping. Narrative Select will recognize when a batch of photos belong to the same scene. It will line them up together and even flag which ones it thinks are stronger. That means when you fire off a burst of 10 images, instead of trying to figure out which one of those 10 nearly identical frames is the winner, you'll see them grouped, sorted with a suggestion for the best option. And here's something new from their latest updates. Narrative has expanded into editing with something they called AI presets. These are styles that can be trained on your own edits or borrowed from other photographers. Once trained, you can actually apply those presets offline and when you export your cool set into Lightroom, the images can arrive already pre-edited in your own style. Now that is a big step forward because now Narrative is not just a cooling assistant, but it's also starting to play in the editing space too. Now Narrative Select does have its limits. Because it's not fully automated, you still do a lot of the decision making. The software is great at telling you which shots might be technically flawed, but sometimes it will reject a frame that actually matters. Like when someone's mid blinking, but the moment is important because it shows emotion. And while it shines with people and faces and events, if you shoot products, foods, or landscapes, most of that face analysis magic just doesn't apply. Switching over to Aftershoot, the approach here is much more automated. You drop your images and then you just let it go to work. And they load fast, I gotta say. And I shoot a lot. This is not the kind of software that will make you wait while everything is just still being loaded and you just can't start working till everything is in the software. Believe me, it's fast. Aftershoot will also identify duplicates, group them, check for blinks, mark out of focus images, and just actually make the selections for you. Instead of just pointing out that someone has their eyes closed, it goes ahead and ditches those frames, leaving you with a shot list that makes sense. The idea here is that you don't have to hover over every phase or confirm every decision. The AI takes on that load so you can go straight into editing, client delivery, or whatever. But don't worry, nothing gets deleted. You still have power to alter the selection. You can go through the blurry folder and decide if something that was marked as blurry should be brought back to your selection. So. That's good. Now I want to touch back on the speed aspect I mentioned in the beginning because it goes beyond just the loading process. Aftershoot has been trained on millions of real images from professional photographers, which is why the baseline intelligence feels more reliable and faster. I mean, you still want to check over the results because come on, no AI is perfect, but the difference is that the heavy lifting has already been done by the time you sit down to do it. And on top of that, on top of cooling, Aftershoot also offers AI-assisted editing. You can train it, have it apply that style across an entire photo shoot. Aftershoot is more of like a full workflow tool than just a cooling up, which makes it stand out. Another important thing to mention is AI retouching. With Aftershoot, we can cool, edit, and retouch all within the software. That means that after you're done with the selection and editing process, you can go ahead and use AI to remove blemishes, soften skin, work on reflection on glasses, etc. Now, this is amazing. Aftershoot is rapidly becoming a one-stop shop for all your photography needs. Now, both tools work offline, which is a big deal for many photographers who just don't want to upload thousands of files into the cloud. And they both keep getting better with each update. 
Narrative has been rolling out improvements on speed, user interface, and scene grouping, and Aftershoot has been pushing its edits feature, retouching tools, and fine-tuning the AI to become more accurate with every update too. So how do they compare in real life? Well, Narrative Select is for photographers who like being in the driver's seat, who want to control the process, but appreciate having a smart co-pilot pointing out potential issues. It's especially useful if your work revolves around people, portraits, because that's where the face and eye analysis shines. Aftershoot, on the other hand, is designed for speed and automation. It's like saying, don't just point out the potholes in the road, actually drive me around them. If you're shooting large volumes of weddings, events, or client work every week, the time saved is massive. Plus, retouching. Don't forget about retouching. Now, both tools will miss things every now and then. Both tools can sometimes reject a shot. But the point is, you're no longer spending endless hours checking every blink or duplicate frame. You're shaving off hours of work, sometimes entire days. And that's where the real value is. Anyways, that's it for today. If you were on the fence about any of these, now you have more information to make an informed decision. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next one. Bye.